Hello, everyone. I hope you can uh, uh, hear us. Um, we're just about to start uh, our uh, tech talk, uh, our first ever Jakarta tech talk. So um, let me first introduce myself. So my name is Tanya Obradovic, and I got this fabulous opportunity to be your uh, Jakarta e program manager. So today uh, we're starting with uh, um, uh, our new series, and uh, we're hoping to discuss topics related to not just Jakarta e, but, but uh, um, uh, Java cloud native uh, topics as well. And <clears throat> We are starting with the first uh, tech talk uh, from Otavio, who is uh, uh, right here as well. So Otavio will be talking about the um, Jakarta uh, meets NoSQL, uh, the, the the specification that is going to be under uh, Jakarta EE, and then uh, we'll uh, listen. Um, uh, Wayne Beaton is going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, the uh, process and what uh, we can do to start things off. And then we'll open the session for questions and answers. So um, with this little intro, I don't want to uh, waste too much time and I will just hand it over to Otavio and Otavio, you can uh, take it from here and tell us all about uh, um, Jakarta NoSQL. Okay, thank you. I'm glad to be here twice. The first one because I'm going to be the first guy to do the Jakarta series. And I'm going to leave the first specification in Jakarta E, right? So I'm going to talk about Jakarta uh, meets NoSQL because NoSQL is going to be the first specification in the Jakarta world. So my name is Otavio Santana. Let's share my screen. One second. So, Tanya, can you see my screen? Does everybody can see my screen? Let's see. Okay, you can see my screen right now. So, I'm gonna talk about about it. So, my Twitter handle is Otavio Java. So, I'm a Twitter fan. Please follow me, and I came to do some news about the new specification about the Gano SQL products. So let me introduce you. So the whole idea here is talk about uh, a Jakarta No SQL specification. But first, I need to talk about what No SQL is. So No SQL is uh, a different kind of persistence technology. Yes. That's a database. So you can put information there. We can retry information for their update and delete information. But they don't use a structure. They usually don't have transaction. And we have here uh, five different types of NoSQL database. The first one is key value. So we have a several implementation of this kind. It looks like a key uh, hash map or map implementation from the Java world. So given key, I can retrieve some information from this key. For example, I have the Apollo that returns the sun, Aries, the war. So given key, I can return the value. The next one is the column family. So here we have the structure that looks like a key value. However, it has, it stores the value on different way. Each information gonna be stored in the column. As you can see here, for example, Aphrodite, it has a column that has the information lovey and happy, and color that has the pink information. So we have, again, we have a several implement, implementation I believe the most popular one is Apache Cassandra, but you have 8Base, SkillaDB as well. Going to the third NoSQL database type, we have the document. The structure looks like uh, XML or JSON file. We have a several implementation. Uh, the MongoDB is 
so far the most popular NoSQL database famous around the world. So if you hear about MongoDB, yes, that's a NoSQL database of the type document. And we have also the graph. The graph keeps the relationship between the vertex. As you can see here, we have Apollo, Aries, and Kratos. And we keep the relationship between this guy here. Okay, what the difference between this technology and SQL technology? It's because I put the direction here. For example, I can say Kratos killed Apollo. And I can say again, Apollo was killed by Kratos. So I have a direction to my relationship here. And the last one is a moot model. Basically, a moot model is when one NoSQL implementer implements more than one type. For example, I have RNDB that implements two different types, so graph and document. So that's a moot model. Okay. Um, usually, when you talk about NoSQL, you, you think about SQL technology. So here the difference, we don't have enough time to, to talk about the diff main difference. But I'd like to show here is the structure matters and each NoSQL type has a different structure in a different hierarchy. For example, SQL has relationship and key value and the column don't have relationship and graph, I have an uh, entire object to hold the relationship and also the direction, the properties. So I can go deep on relationship with graph deeper than SQL and relational technology. And okay, let's talk about the application, the Java application we use in both persistent technology. On, on this hand here, I have the relation, relational application that I have the, the my logic application, and then I have my DAO, data access object. If I've been using the standards, I have the JPA and the J, JDBC. So JPA is the mapping layer. So I have my objects and put some annotation and the JDBC does the log communication. So basically, it's going to use SQL, um, going to communicate directly to the database. On the other hand, I have the NoSQL application. So the difference here is because I don't have a standard, a standard yet. So I have one API to different kind of NoSQL database. That means if I'd like to change, I need to learn a new API. I need to change my whole uh, API application. And the first solution that people is looking for is why I don't use JPA to solve no SQL issues. The first reason is because uh, JPA was created to SQL technology. So the API do not cover something like saves asynchronously, uh, the time to leave definition, the cost test level. And one important thing here on NoSQL database is because the diversity matter to NoSQL world. So we have Cassandra that has specific behavior that I'd like to use. And mm -hmm. to look to have the solution, we have created the Eclipse general SQL solution. That looks like the JPA, JDBC solution. Uh, and they have a, a, a small difference because we have the mapping, we have the communication, and we have to each NoSQL type, 
on different API. So one API to column, one API to document, one API to key, and one API to graph database. Okay. So why we have two different APIs? We have API to communication and one API to mapping. As you can see here, we are looking for the communication native API. We have the AroundDB, we have MongoDB, we have CalcBase, and ArrayDB. All these guys here are NoSQL database and also our document, NoSQL database. And as you can see here, the class are different, the, the method name are is different, uh, but they try to do the exactly same thing. Give the document, try to put information there, name and value. Why not just use one interf interface and each provider implements of this way? That's what, what you're looking for. And again, the diversity matters. So we can see here some, some interface that has multiple implementation. And also we have something that belongs just to Cassandra as uh, the CQL, because CQL means Cassandra query language. And the last slide here is a consistent level that just belongs to Cassandra. And okay, you talk about the communication layer, so let's talk about the mapping. The mapping looks like the JPA. So we have some annotations such as entity, column, ID, and something like that. And we have some specific uh, specific communication to this mapping layer. So for example, here we have the document templates that is to connect to document type. And one that interesting thing here is that we have the repository concept. So basically we have the interface, we, we create the interface, we extend the repository interface and done. The framework gonna implement everything to you. For example here, I by convention. So I create the method find by name and that uh, repository from God. So it's going to find by name. It returned just one God with optional. Also, I can use find by name and age or the by something. So we use the convention. We can do some queries. And again, at the communication layer, the mapping matter matters, the diversity matters. So we have something like UDT annotation that uh, use the final type that belongs just to Cassandra NoSQL database as the CQL annotation that run CQL and then convert to God entity. And one cool feature is we have uh, the queries by text. So as you can see here, I have the document template that does operation to document. I have the column template that does column and uh, that does column operation, key value and graph. As you can see here, the query are different because the, the structure are different. So, and then we have prepare statement. Uh, we have something like we, we, we usually do on, on SQL technology using no SQL words. Okay. And of course, given repository, can use some query annotation and use some, some parameters and they're gonna implement automatically to 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 us. So I believe I have time to show a demo. Okay, let's share a different screen. 
that's this guy here. Okay, he is my simple. I I have an entity that's a god entity. So that has some annotation as you can see here. So I have the god. I have some ID annotation to say okay this entry this field here is ID. I have the column and that's a Java object, right? So I have my builder here, that's God builder. So, and I have a simplest way to start my NoSQL database is using Docker Compose. As you can see here, I have Redis, Cassandra, Mongo, MongoDB, Neo4j, and And have a JSON file that has our configuration that JNOSQL needs. So as you can see here, it's a JSON file. So the first one here belongs to key value. The second one belongs to the column that are using Cassandra. The third one is to document that you are using count base. And the last one is a graph database that we're using Neo4j. We have the God repository. As you can see here, there's no implementation to this guy. The whole idea here is to the GenoSQL implement it automatically to, to me. Okay. I have uh the all sample here is gonna be on the GitHub, so you can study, you can go to get more information about it. I'm gonna pick one to run some demo. As you can see here, it's a CDI 2.0. So I start the container using the Java SC, and then I inject my repository, I create my my entity, and then use save. And and that is it. I can find my ID. As I told you, I can create my home convention here. So find by name, I can find object by the name. Uh, there's something here happened with the sample here, this time with the document. So the whole idea is I start the container, I have my template, uh, and this template here can do some operation can make some operation to to us on an easy way of course we have a query as you can see here what i'm doing is start taking import and you are using here a uh, fluent api so select here all the fields from god where the name is equal diana and then i have my query to document operation and there I can retrieve this guy here. Okay. I can also define the TTL. So remember the whole idea here is to define the time to the entity leaves on the database. So as you can see here, the duration is for one second. So if you're going to zip for two seconds, when I return again, it's going to return entity. The key value, of course, this one is smooth because key value basically I can retrieve just for the key. So I create my entity, Diana. I return it from the key, Diana. I can define the time to leave. Again, use my key. My key is totally mandatory here. Remember, key value is look like the the map from Java. And the last one that I'd like to show more is my graph database. I believe the graph database is more uh, different one if you look for SQL technology. So I have my graph template again to operation to graph. And then I create two 
to entities Diana and Apollo. I insert it in the database. I use some transaction to say, okay, it's time to go to the database. And then I do a, 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 a query. As you can see, this one is totally different from document. So give my vertex that has God label and has the name Diana. And done. It's returned Diana and then Apollo. And then I create a relationship between Sky here. So if Diana, I can say Diana is brother of Apollo. And Apollo is also brother from Diana. Why this uh, why this buff relationship? Because again, graph has directions. And I can do more queries as you can see here. Give my vertex that has cut as label that has the diet name. And then you can return from family. So give a god that has a broader relationship and it lets you return both. So that's the result. So let's start the, the Docker here. One second with this graph database. And okay, it's up. It's a Docker. So let's run Sky here. Let's run. Uh, I'm gonna stop show this screen here, and then I'm gonna show the new 4J console. This little guy here, as you can see. Um, I can do some operation, but for now, as you can see, I have Diana that is brother from Apollo in Apollo that's brother from Diana. Uh, usually, uh, recommendation engine use graph database a lot, uh, mostly the Alpha-J. And as you can see, uh, my whole code, I'm using, let's show my code again. Um, I use a comma API, so I have my communication layer, layer here that is ready to key value Cassandra to column the uh, couch base to document, uh, and I can change that. So, okay, I'd like to use column but eight base. I just need to change that that dependence to an eight base driver. Oh, I'd like to use has a cast instead the ready so I just replace this dependence here to okay this time I'm gonna use has uh, a instead of ready okay let's return to the slides. Slides here, and that's we did. We did that presentation. Right now, we have some providers, some NoSQL providers that uh, Eclipse and NoSQL offer to if you'd like to use. So we have support Cassandra, Skill, Elasticsearch, RMDB, or NDB. And one important thing here is um, Jakarta NoSQL. Um, gonna use Eclipse General SQL as reference implementation. Okay. That is my presentation. Wayne.
uh, that's that's all. Is there any question? But I believe Wayne is going to be first, right? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to take over. But uh, Stephanie and and Tanya, do we need to uh, any or any business before I do that? So <clears throat> you were. Uh, what, what was your question, Wayne? I'm sorry. I'm part of it. Pardon me. I, I was, I'm just ready to take over. I, I was. Uh, yep. You can take over. A, all right. Um, Okay, here we go. I am screen sharing. So uh, can I safely assume, Octavio, can you uh, nod your head that you see a, uh, a slide that says Eclipse Foundation specification process? Yeah, I can see it. Thanks. Okay, excellent. Okay, good. So um, I only have a couple of minutes. I, I plan to to speak only for ten, um, and I, I might come a little shorter than that. I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about where we are uh, in the process and sort of make sure uh, that we as a community are on the, on the same page or thinking the same sort of thing uh, about uh, about what uh, what's next. So. Um, just to uh, refresh everybody's memories, uh, our goals um, uh, with this effort um, are first to push out uh, Eclipse Glassfish 5.1. Now, uh, Eclipse Glassfish 5.1 is implementing the existing uh, Java EE8 uh, specifications, and uh, that's due out next week. And it looks like we're we're on track for a release of that, and and that's uh, frankly represents a huge amount of work from all sorts of people, and uh, and that's a wonderful uh, thing in my mind. Um, certainly, uh, though, uh, there has been um, we've uh, allowed a few uh, invalid what, what what I tend to refer as invalid intermediate states uh, through this implementation. Um, so the part of what we need to do following this is to uh, to, to to clean up a couple of things, but uh, but by and large this has uh, been a great effort and um, looking forward to uh, you know rolling up our sleeves and, and continuing. The the next um, the next stage actually uh, the, the next stage is uh, actually pushing out something uh, the Jakarta EE eight. Uh, uh, specifications themselves. So, uh, you know, like I said, the 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 work that we've been doing, uh, we've done so far on Glassfish, has been about moving uh, the existing content over to the Eclipse Foundation to get us into a position where we can move forward. Um, so, with Jakarta EE8 now, it's a matter of actually implementing our specification process, taking the existing specification content um, that we have, and actually turning them into real. Jakarta branded uh, specifications. Um, and uh, that's um, going to be a, an interesting uh, bit of work as well. Um, once we get to that point and we declare success on the Jakarta EE8, uh, then we're looking at uh, the really exciting part of this, which is the uh, the, the opening up the floodgates and, and allowing uh, real interesting new, uh, new development uh, work to go on. Um, one of the things we're trying to do, and, and I hope that the community appreciates this, is we're trying to keep uh, Jakarta EE8 will be um, the, offer functional parity with uh, Java EE8. Uh, uh, we're trying uh, to, to minimize the amount of, uh, of change that occurs in, in the code bases and in the specification documents themselves. Uh, this uh, should result in you know what we're looking for would probably be minor um, modifications of source files, the comments, that sort of thing. Um, no changes in method signatures. Um, changes of specification names, possibly that sort of thing. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what specification projects themselves will uh, look like. The a um, little bit different than what we we used to do with the JCP. Um, as I look through uh, the various um, uh, JSRs, I, I see you know multiple JSRs. Uh, different uh, compositions of teams um, and whatnot for the uh, various uh, specifications as they evolve. With the Eclipse uh, Foundation specification process, we have one persistent project that is uh, responsible for creating uh, one or more specifications. Um, the project has a team of committers and, and like any other open source uh, project at the Eclipse Foundation, uh, committers are added to the roles, removed from the roles. There's a natural 
uh, way that, uh, that that teams uh, change um, over time. But uh, the fact is that there will be a single team that that moves forward multiple versions of any particular specification. Now, I did say uh, that a, a specification project may handle multiple specifications. Uh, we actually have um, a, a um, project, it's called um, uh, Eclipse Project for Stable Jakarta EEAPIs. -E -E <clears throat> and this uh, this project actually holds five specifications right now, or is intended to hold five specifications. Uh, the idea being that as specifications become more stable, um, and there's not a lot of uh, a potential for innovation, and we decide that it's not uh, not something that's going to uh, to grow significantly, we can uh, aggregate projects into uh, or aggregate specifications into into this project or or into others. Um, so you know, very much a, a maintenance uh, style project, uh, and there's a couple of other cases where a single specification project uh, may hold multiple specifications. I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about when we use the word specification. Uh, specification is one of those words that we tend to overload. The um, uh, we refer to in the uh, specification process uh, a specification document. Uh, again, very often people will use when they may, when they say the word specification, they mean the specification document. Uh, we think of the specification being the entirety of the uh, artifacts that uh, make up. Um, um, a particular specification, uh, and in, in fact, I'm actually calling uh, calling out a, a specific version of a specification with this diagram. Um, it's a, particular, a particular version of a, a specification will have a, a document. Um, it will have uh, certain technical artifacts uh, in the Java space, as manifests as um, API files, interfaces, that sort of thing. A uh, specification version also has a TCK and um, pointers to one or more compatible implementations. Now, uh, this is a, an, another place where we, we differ from the JCP. Um, we don't have a notion of a single reference implementation. Instead, we have a notion of compatible implementations. And uh, one of the requirements uh, for a specification is that there must be at least one compatible implementation using an open source license. The uh, list of open source licenses um, is currently, and I'm going to flip over to make sure I get this right, the Eclipse Public License, uh, the Eclipse Distribution License, which is a BSD3 clause, or the Apache License version 2. Um, so again, um, for to be a specification, according to our process, uh, there must be a compatible implementation under one of those open source licenses. Uh, now, that's not to say there can't be implementations under uh, other licenses, and uh, certainly an implementation that conforms to the specification would be said to be compatible independent of its license. Um, the, the notion here, though, is that in order for a specification to be valid, there must be at least one compatible implementation under one of those licenses. I'm hoping that's not, uh, not made things more confusing. Um, so we combine these uh, various artifacts uh, into, like I said, a particular version of a specification. Uh, the collection of artifacts is uh, something that is distributed um, as, a, as a unit and um, is thought to be indivisible um, for, again, for any particular version. Uh, there's no rule that suggests that uh, the TCK be represented in any particular um, uh, project. So what we're seeing right now, for example, is we have a single TCK project that covers most of our specifications in the Jakarta space. Um, and uh, that's fine. Um, it's actually part of a, a, like I said, part of a different project. I uh, thought I'd talk just briefly about the uh, the process over you know, the the day to day work of uh, of the committers, uh, and I've highlighted uh, the creation review uh, part here because for specification projects, we're actually kind of at that stage right now. Um, strictly speaking, we have a bunch of regular old Eclipse open source projects uh, right now that contain some specification content. Uh, and part of our uh, process um, to, to, to engage in the specification development work will be to convert these into specification pro projects. Um, I did actually a quick look, and um, it's looking like um, a, a lot of the um, specification projects, these are all the ones called Eclipse Project 4, 
um, something. Uh, have um, a lot of the project teams have reworked their scopes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we've got she's got some fairly well defined scopes on these projects. Um, so we're gonna you know at some point we need to move these uh, projects forward and uh, turn them into specification projects so that we can can you know do the actual specification work. Part of that is getting the scope right. Part of that is uh, we're going to require that the committers um, the committers are, are need to provide us with a little bit of uh, of new paperwork, some more paperwork, and um, um, and and then again we'll we'll move forward into a development phase. The um, reviews uh, through this process all require approval from the uh, specification committee of a uh, of a working group. Um, the, this is a, a committee that's basically put together to provide some governance and oversight of uh, the specification process, uh, specifically for the Jakarta projects. And um, uh, so it's, again, as part of that, we get, we get their approval on the creation review um, and the progress review. Much like with the, uh, the JCP um, um, executive committee, the way that the specification committee votes, uh, the criteria that they follow um, is what we're looking for is that they're they're ensuring that projects are staying within scope, and that they're uh, they're operating um, sort of with with, with good um, good intentions uh, in in the specification process, and uh, with uh, with each review, the the specification committee just gets an opportunity to ensure uh, that this is true. Um, so the specification committee gets a chance to to weigh in on the, a plan uh, for new development. They get. Uh, they get an opportunity to to uh, approve the progress of a of a project, um, and then ultimately, when a project engages in a, a, a standard release review per the Eclipse development process, the specification committee uh, gets a vote as well. Um, the specification itself uh, goes through a transformation after a release review uh, to become ratified, kind of kind of a make marking the specification official. Uh, and it's at that point when a specification is ratified that uh, implementers uh, can um, can claim compatibility with the specification. Uh, anyway, um, I, I, I this really all I intended to to speak about uh, today. Just a little brief overview, remind people where what we're doing and, and where we are in the process. And uh, with that, um, I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, you can also um, um, send me questions uh, directly to my email, uh, wayne at eclipse.org. OK, thanks, Wayne. Thanks, thanks Otavio. Um, so we'll open this for uh, additional questions. I do see some questions in the chat as well. Um, and I also see um, we have answered uh, quite a few. So um, if um, there is something else, uh, um, you know, uh, do let us know. Uh, and uh, we will, um, you know, have these sessions once, excuse me, once a month. Um, and uh, we'll give you uh, plenty of opportunity to uh, to ask us questions. I also want to um, mention that next week uh, we have a, a Jakarta e town hall, um, uh, and I hope you all got the notification about that. So uh, feel free to um, uh, uh, join that session also, uh, and the then you will have the opportunity to kind of uh, ask questions from um, uh, members of uh, various members of the working group uh, on the status of Jakarta E and where we're going, uh, what has been done and so on. Um, so uh, with that, um, are we, um, are there any questions that uh, still need uh, answering? So, um, can you tweet the link to the Jakarta e town call? Absolutely. Um, I don't think there is going to be a, a live stream, but there is a session and a link uh, that we are providing to Zoom where you would be able to, to join. So um, it is, uh, we also have the meetup uh, uh, organized and the meetup is going to point you to the uh, Zoom link. Um, so uh, hang in there for that. Um, Wayne, uh, do you see, or, or Otavio, uh, any additional questions that uh, you would like to answer? I see 
your question on the um, uh, the the licenses. I think uh, Wayne uh, mentioned all the licenses that are um, uh, related. Uh, can okay, hold on. Your demo project available somewhere, Otavio. Uh, I think that question is for you. Yeah, let's share the screen, the, the link. Okay, I put the uh, the answer. Okay, sounds great. So where where I can find the code at GitHub? Um, so you, if you go to Jakarta EE. Jakarta, sorry, dot ee um, link, uh, you will find the pointers from there. Uh, if you don't find it, uh, um, uh, please, uh, um, you know, contact us uh, in a different way and I will send you the direct link. Yeah, you can also, please don't forget uh, uh, from the uh, Jakarta Tech Talks uh, where you joined this session uh, to subscribe to um, uh, all the um, or look at the pointers uh, to uh, get social right and subscribe to um, uh, the YouTube channel to Twitter Facebook LinkedIn uh, and do help us out to uh, promote uh, Jakarta E uh, we also absolutely love to see more members of the uh, talk um, tech talk meetups Jakarta tech talk meetups so uh, please uh, uh, join um, the meetup and uh, yeah, help us out. Um, so with all of this, uh, thank you very, very much for joining our first session. And uh, uh, you're more than welcome to join us for the Tech Talk next week uh, with Zoom. And then of course, in February, uh, we're looking forward to um, uh, see you again. Uh, thank you so very much, and uh, uh, I will stop the broadcast right now, and we'll talk later. Bye.